Here for our final conversations with the candidates for Denver mayor, Mike Johnson is back. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. All right, you've got 30 seconds to convince somebody to vote for you for mayor. What's your pitch? Uh, my pitch is Denver's at a crossroads. We need a leader who can both take on really hard problems and who can bring together really broad and diverse coalitions to get those things done. I've done that as a teacher, as a school principal, as a state legislator, and as a CEO, and we're going to need a mayor who can do that, and I'm ready to do it. Running for mayor, you are just dealing with a fire hose of new information, <laughs> new perspectives. I'm curious, is there an issue where you have changed your view based on what you've learned on the campaign trail? Um, yeah, I think one which you talked about was, I think, the financing for Broncos Stadium. The more I talked to people, the more I researched, the more I realized I didn't think we needed to be able to use taxpayer dollars because it was clear there was a lot of stadiums that had been built without them. That was one. Uh, I think the other was probably on bike lanes and the combination of bike and safe um, access to downtown people that are riding bikes, how important that was to make sure we get that done. I learned a lot from bikers around the city that felt like they were very much at risk with the current structure. So those have, I think, been two that come to mind as learnings I've had along the way. Interesting. Kelly said bike lanes as well. That's interesting. Uh, several hundred women have gathered at the state capitol today. I know you were down there. Yeah. Protests calling for a complete ban on guns. We'll start with the basic yes or no, and we talk about it more broadly. Yes or no, do you support here for the kids' goal of banning all guns? No. Because De I think it's unconstitutional. Denver already has pretty stringent gun control. Are there specific things that you would do on guns as mayor? There are. I, mean, I think the legislature, is, when I started this campaign six months ago, I had a couple of really ambitious goals. I supported things like increasing the age of purchase to 21, adding um, wait times for purchase, the ability to expand the red flag lowers. Legislature did a great job expanding those this year. I think now it really comes down to, like many things, the city's obligation to implement and to be able to actually follow through on these. And the most obvious one for me is red flag laws. We know how rigorously you enforce those come down to your police departments. That's true for victims of domestic violence. It's true for risk of mass shooters. It's true for kids who are at risk. I think we have to really shift our mindset from being very rarely using these flags to being much more likely to use them. I'm going to ask you each to respond to a specific criticism from a prominent person in our community. Yeah. CU Regent Wanda James, who supports your opponent, wrote, Mike is looking for a job. He wanted to be governor, then senator, now mayor. He is all over the place. Response. <laughs> uh, I love the job that I had as the last three years as the CEO of a foundation here in Denver, uh, working a lot on issues the city's facing right now, like homelessness and affordable housing. But the closer I got to those problems, the more I realized the only way to really solve those is to be able to coordinate all of the services that the city provides, particularly on something like homelessness, where you have to make sure that what law enforcement is doing is aligned to what mental health is doing, is aligned to what our jails are doing, is aligned to what our addiction treatment is doing. And I love the city so much, I want to make sure that we are a place that we're all going to be proud to raise our kids in and our grandkids in. And I think um, that is the one task for this moment, and this is the one job I think has the power to do it. You have said that you won't serve more than two terms if elected. Maximum would be three. So let's talk about the minimum. <laughs> At least one of the jobs that you've previously sought is going to be open in 2026, the job of governor. And Senate, too, if for some reason John Hickenlooper decided not to run again. Will you pledge to serve a full four-year term if elected? 100 percent. Yeah, I'm all in on this job. I'm so excited about what we can do in Denver. I think it's going to take eight years. So if the people will have me, I'd love to stay for eight years and try to get what we want to get done around affordable housing and homelessness and crime. But this is the, this is the only job for me. This is the one I'm all in to try to serve the people with. Your opponent's chief criticism of you down the home stretch is related to the folks who are funding your campaign, broadly speaking, outside expenditures that your campaign can't coordinate with, but in support of your run for mayor. Reed Hoffman, the LinkedIn founder and billionaire, spent at least $1.7 million to get you elected. Given that apparently unprecedented amount of spending on a Denver mayoral race, what level of transparency do voters deserve about your relationship with Mr. Hoffman? Yeah, I think for me, this has been a clear issue of these are people who are progressive supporters who have supported progressive candidates around the country. They're people that help defeat Donald Trump. They help keep a Senate majority. The people that care about progressive leaders passing progressive policies, we're happy to have that support. I think it's different from the folks supporting Kelly, where she's got, you know, Republican billionaires who are Trump supporters and have opposed things like access to abortion care or others. And so I think there's a very different set of who's lining up behind us. But nothing's been promised. Nothing's been offered. These are people I've had the chance to work with in the past and other coalitions we've built, whether it was immigration reform or gun safety. And so they've seen me work. They've seen me have the courage to take on hard problems. And they've seen me deliver results. And I think that's why they're backing me. It, in fairness, the, the big name Republicans who are supporting Kelly are not putting in $1.7 million. They're putting in far smaller amounts of money. So I guess... As it relates to your relationship with Mr. Hoffman, he says that you're his friend. Are you guys friends? Yeah, I've known him for a while. Okay. When was the last time you talked? What did you talk about? 
Oh, I haven't talked to him since I think maybe six months ago, probably before the race started. Uh, we talked about AI. He's very involved in AI and some of the work that's happening there. Um, and so that was the key part of our conversation was about issues I was working on. I was at the foundation then talking about, uh, we were working actually at that point on, the, on affordable housing statewide, Prop 123. So I was talking about that measure and then about, um, and then about some of the work he was doing on AI. So we have a friendship. I think uh, he backs candidates around the country that he thinks are courageous leaders. I think he released a statement on LinkedIn or others saying that about me. And so that's the extent of what I know as to why he did it. You don't think he wants something more from you in return? No, nothing at all. I think there's no, nothing that's been offered, nothing that's been asked. I think he just wants to see progressive leaders succeed and wants to see that you can deliver cities that can both thrive economically and still be safe and affordable and vibrant. Is there an issue that you hear voters talk about a lot that we in the media are missing? Um, I mean, I think the, the media has been talking about it, but I think the extent to which people worry every day now about their kids being safe at school is one that I hear every single day. And that has changed through the course of this campaign. I think the East High School shootings changed that. When we started, it was all homelessness, all affordable housing, all public safety all the time. But now it's much more about just, not just are my kids safe from some sort of mass shooting at school, but are my kids safe at a party on a Friday night in Denver where there could be an 18-year-old with a gun? I think that is really uh, on every parent's mind that I've talked to. Your opponent said the same thing to that question. Um, that said, the situation as it relates to DPS has been evolving throughout this campaign as well. And now there's talk on the school board that maybe they don't want SROs after all in schools. Has your view shifted at all about what the mayor can bring to bear on the situation? No, my view has been pretty much the same because I was a school principal and I managed this. I had a school resource officer for a while, and then I chose not to have one for a while because the school was in a position where we didn't need it and we needed a social worker more. So I've always said I trust the principals and the teachers and the parents that are closest to that school to make that decision. Um, and if they do make the decision to have it, to also put the right guardrails around what a school resource officer does. I don't need a school resource officer ticketing kids for throwing food in the cafeteria or for kids wearing pants too low. We don't need to criminalize kids to have them there. But if I had a kid that I thought had a gun on a campus, I needed someone to frisk that student, I would want it to be not my English teacher or my dean of students. Last question I'm going to ask you in this campaign. What have you liked the most and what have you disliked the most about the process of running for mayor? Um, I, I've liked the most just the very grassroots nature of it. I love, I've liked being in people's living rooms and coffee shops all around the city and you get to have real in-depth conversations, you get to know each neighborhood really well. Um, uh, I think probably next time around we could be benefit from a from a debate commission to say I think Kelly and I did maybe 25 or 28 in the runoff, um, and I think that while I totally understand why every neighborhood wants to have it engaged, I think there would have been a chance to say let's do five or let's do eight uh, and make the whole city really pay attention to those in a way that gets people's focus. I think that probably would have been better than what we did this last time. But for the most part, I felt like I've learned something every day uh, from a voter or resident I've walked up to, and that's been a real gift for me. I will say, and I'll tell her the same thing, the two of you are very consistent in what you say in all of these forums. It must, it must be painful to do all of them <laughs> and to listen to all of them. But as somebody who's listened to everyone saying, are you both being consistent? The two of you have been remarkably consistent throughout the campaign in which you've told each of these groups. Well, I'll say, you and your campaign, you've answered every question, as have uh, has your opponent, and you've made yourself available for in-depth conversations. So hope that would continue if you're elected. Well, look forward to it. Thanks for all the coverage you've done to make this uh, race a real priority. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet.